we have to recognize that there are, uh, that we, we face four Ds, deficits, debt, dependency, and the ditch. Deficits, we've gone from a $236 billion surplus in 2000. It was a real surplus. We actually had a surplus without Social Security, so we actually paid down some debt in 2000 to where last year we had a $1.42 trillion deficit. This year it will be 1.5 to 1.6, and based on realistic assumptions, it's likely to be a trillion dollar plus for a number of years, absent some tough fundamental reforms. In the last three years alone, it's ten gone up ten times. Ten times in three years. Now, in fairness, most of that is because of the recession. It's because of two undeclared and unfinanced wars. It's because of bailouts dealing with insurance companies, financial institutions, autom automobile manufacturers, and others. Uh, and so there are reasons why that's the case. And quite frankly, while it's troubling uh, to, to Americans to talk about trillions of dollars and the related debt of $12.5 trillion, that's not really what our threat is for the future. And in fact, the deficits may have to go up somewhat in the short term in order to get unemployment down. And as long as it's timely, targeted, temporary, structured properly, executed effectively, that's not necessarily a concern. So the first is deficits. The second is debt. In the last 10 years, total debt has doubled. And it's on track to double again in the next 10 years. At the beginning of the Republic in 1789, we had debt equal to GDP of 40% of the economy. But we got something for it. We won our independence. We gained ratification of the Constitution. And that 40% of debt to GDP was not just federal debt, it was all the state debt in order to gain ratification of the Constitution and the grand bargain that took place over the Capitol uh, and, uh, our, uh, and a variety of financial and other related matters, okay? At the end of World War II, we had debt to GDP of 122%, the highest in history. But we got something for it. We defeated the Axis powers. We saved the free world. We avoided attack, attack on our homeland. We were over 50% of the global economy after World War II, and the dollar was as good as gold. Today, if you count total debt, that means debt held by the public as well as debt owed to Social Security and Medicare and other so-called trust funds. I'll come back to that. You have to put that in quote, quotes. Uh, if you add it all up, we're at 85 percent of GDP, headed to 95 percent by the end of this year, and headed up. And what are we getting for it? You tell me. You tell me. The simple fact of the matter is, is that from 1789 until about three decades ago, the United States did not run deficits and accumulate debt unless we had a declared war, we're in a depression, or a serious recession. And then we took steps to try to grow the economy, to restore fiscal responsibility, to lessen the burden in order to help create a better future for our country, for our children, and our grandchildren. But starting within the last several decades, American Americans have become addicted to conspicuous consumption and debt, and as a result, we've mortgaged the future. Some debt is okay. Some deficits are okay. Some level of dependencies are, are, is okay. But on the path that we're on, we're clearly on an imprudent and unsustainable path. At the end of World War II, even though we had debt equal to GDP of 122%, we had virtually no foreign debt. We owed it all to ourselves. And therefore, the debt service stayed in our economy and benefited ourselves. Today, about half of our public debt is held by foreign lenders. The debt service goes overseas. That's not in our long-term economic, foreign policy, national security, or even domestic tranquility interest. Just ask Warren Buffett in IOUSA. So, the ditch. Our problem is not today's deficit. It's not today's debt. It's not the unfunded obligation, certain other unfunded obligations. It's the off-balance sheet obligations. We have $12.5 trillion in debt, and we have about $50 trillion in unfunded promises for Medicare, Social Security, and other commitments and contingencies that don't represent debt today, but they will represent debt tomorrow absent 
some type of reforms. Medicare alone is $38 trillion in the hole. $38 trillion. Social Security is about $7 trillion in the hole. That's chunk change. We can deal with that. All right? The Medicare prescription drug bill has got a, a larger underfunding than Social Security. So, and yet we're still talking about growing government more and making more promises.